Now, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Food It's Blitz. Interestingly, I've had a load of comments recently about how to work or drive or play this particular tank, the British Tier 9 Heavy, the Conqueror. It seems that quite a few of you are grinding it, and it also seems that quite a few of you are having difficulties with it. But I don't understand why. I mean, this is a beautiful Tier 9 Heavy. In fact, I really like this tank. It's one of the better British tanks, and it's one of the easier to get on with. But the thing is, like all the British tanks, it's not exactly noob friendly. In fact, far, far from it. It's a tricky tank. I mean, you've got to know its weaknesses and you've got to know its strengths. And that's the whole idea of this video. So let's get into what this tank is actually all about, shall we? That's what it looks like. It's a beautiful tank. It's a it's a heavy. It's a tier nine heavy. A lot of people have been arguing that it's being power creep. I'm not one of those. The reason being, well, I'll show you when we do some tank compare in a moment. The thing about this tank is when you start looking at it, I mean, damage output is pretty good. Rate of fire, okay, it's a bit meh. Penetration is very good. Armor is okay. Looking at the survivability, well, you've got 2,200 odd hit points but look at that turret armor the front of the turret and the front of the hull is very good sides and rear not so much firepower pretty decent dpm okay long reload time good penetration good alpha damage especially for a british tank really good aim time and okay it's got seven degrees of gun depression but you know what you can actually live with that Mobility wise, well, the top speed is 34. That's not that bad. And when I stick it into tank compare, look at this. DPM, it outplays all the other tier heavies that it's comparable to. The WZ111, the E75, the ST1, the IS8. Penetration off the charts. Alpha damage, a little bit low. It's the worst, but it's manageable because look at the rate of fire. The rate of fire is the best. The reload time is the best. The caliber is not the best. But the shell velocity is also the best. Aim time, the best. Dispersion, the best. Elevation and depression, well, 7 degrees, that's not the best. There's an 8 degrees one out there, the WZ, but it's still manageable. But look at those win rates, it's not that great. Stick in the HE and everything goes up, apart from the alpha damage, which it's not the worst anymore, but it's certainly not the best. Everything else, pretty normal. When I stick in the APCR, again, you will see that it is one of the best, not damage wise, and on paper at least, this is one of the better, if not the best, tier 9 heavy you can get. This is my consumable loadout, I use the reactive armor, the adrenaline and the multi repair kit, instead of the speed, the, the super duper speed boost, don't need it. This is my provisions, I use the crew skills cup of tea and cake, the sandbag armor and the extra crew provisions. This is my ammunition loadout. As you can see, I haven't got much APCR, don't need it. And this is my standard equipment loadout for this tank. Because I don't need a grin runner. I mean, the, the reload time is good enough, easy enough to manage with. I just want that extra penetration, even though its penetration is pretty funky already. What about the armor? Well, this is the armor profile. And as you can see, the mantle is pretty solid but those cheeks are a bit meh. Front upper glacius plate is okay, quite a bit of spaced armor. And when I stick it into facing off against an E75, you can start to see here one of the problems people have with this tank, thinking that the turret is rock solid when the cheeks are not. Pretty nice side scraper, but, and this is important, that upper glacius plate, while it looks solid, actually isn't. So be careful of that, guys. But aside from that, it's a beautiful, beautiful tank. It's a good haul down tank, even though it's only got seven degrees of gun depression, but you've got to be mindful of those weak spots. The cupola can be hit. And as you can see, it's only a hundred and it's only 133 millimeters on the turret cheeks with a hundred percent guarantee of penetration from an E75, a tank you are going to come across. What's this tank like to play? Well, I, I like to be sort of passive aggressive in this thing, to be perfectly honest with you. 
Seven degrees of gun depression is a bit meh for a British tank, but you know what? It is manageable. The good thing about it is it has got a very nice gun. Quite accurate for a British tank. You're not really going to struggle with penetration and you're not really going to struggle with dishing out damage. I mean, you're going to be averaging about 360 upwards to that 400 I alpha end. That's nice. I mean, these are tier 10 progettos, going through them quite easily. Take a shot from the progetto there, but he's going to, I can take it. I've got 2,200 odd hit points, so it's not a big deal. Coming round, well, as you can see, I've got the turret angled slightly, which is why I got a bounce there. And I think I bounced an E100. I'm pretty sure I did. And now I'm going to stick the tank into a relatively good haul down position here on this map. And as you can see, I mean, okay, I can't pen him. Stick in the APCR, RNG, thank you very much. Bad aim or whatever, I don't know. But that should have gone through. It did not. I'm still going to stay here because it's a nice little spot. I've, I've got my hall perfectly covered. Nobody can pen me there. And I'm probably going to get bounces on that turret. The dispersion of the E100 isn't the best in the game. So him getting my cheeks when it's not really going to happen, as you can see. I'm able to track him. I'm pretty miffed I'm not penetrating there. I penned him the first time and did some damage, but I'm going to track him into place if I can, allow my team to smack him a bit more. Again, I really thought that shot was going to pen through that front sprocket. It just didn't. And unfortunately, I tried to smack him here, but he moves out of the way. I'm still quite happy being in this position at this moment in time. There are three tanks left. We've got seven on our team. We are not in any way, shape or form in trouble here. There is no reason for me to rush until the enemy team gets themselves into positions. So what I'm going to do now, they're in their positions, got the motion wherever he is, the E100 behind the tanks and the E75 dropping down. Poor old IS-8 gets ammo racked here, bless him from the E100. So, I mean, that's okay. He's, he's just used up all his RNG. E75 is side on, gives me the opportunity to knock over 300 into him. Now I can possibly move. I can see the E100 has got his hands full and he's behind the tank. Mushin is pretty open. I'm going to be able to push onto him a little bit. Another 380 into his side. He is now effectively a two shot to me and a one shot to some others. I'm going to put another one into his side, whittle him down. He's an easy kill. He's taken down by the STB allows me to rotate round and get back up towards the E100. We lost a little bit of hit points, nothing to moan about. I mean, that was from the Progetto at the beginning. I'm not too worried about that because I've used the tank to its to its effect. I've used it all down, I've used the gun depression, and I've used its really accurate gun to do some decent damage. Not setting the world on fire. We do just over 2,500 damage. We take ourselves home a second class, and I'm pretty happy with that. So, because people have asked though, I had to roll out again. And I played all these games this morning. So here we go on Himmelsdorf. A map I'm not overly ingratiated to. I mean, it's a very flat map. But when you're in a conqueror, there is a lot of bumps and dips and piles that you can get behind, hide that hole, use that gun, and really harass the enemy. Now I said to the team, go right, which to their credit they did, if you look at the minimap, we're now allowed to bully this poor T26 Predator. And we are gonna bully him, 400 there, he knocks one into my turret, but he's not gonna pen me, um, realistically, let he loads APCR. I'm gonna pull out again, put another one into his side. I won't finish half, the K91 does. This now allows us to push around. And the reason I don't use the super duper special consumable um, boost is because the mobility on this tank is pretty good. I'm already doing 30 odd kilometers an hour. Now, as you can see, it's pretty mobile. Why do I need to increase that speed? I don't need to at this moment in time. Now I can see that there's quite a few of their tanks down there. That was always gonna be the case because they weren't where we went. So, I'm now prepared to face off against one of two TDs. Now, I'm wondering, well, the ISU is there, so where's the Waffle Tractor? Stick one into the ISU, but it bounces, but he bounces me as I pull away. This now allows me to push onto him and get into a relatively good position behind that pile, just past where the decap would be. This is going to allow me to effectively bully him, and I'm allowed to look. There we go. I've knocked him 
quite nicely there. I'm going to knock another one into him, which I'm really looking forward to. And um, we should be able to take him out. Yes, we do. So we've done quite a bit of damage here. We've taken out a tank and we've harassed another tank. There's the Waffle Tractor. Load up the HE, which is pretty nice in this tank. Put a 445 into him. Not a max roll. We're, we're a bit low there, but not to worry. We've still whiffled him down. He's now a one shot. I've got a good reload. I don't need to do anything other than get around this corner, pump my gun in his general direction and smack him, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. And there we go. And this is what I love about this tank. That gun is great. And as you can see, so far, taking out two tanks, did quite a bit of damage, over 2,000. We've, we've been a menace. They, it's, it's, you know, even Steven's on the team front, but I haven't lost any hit points yet. And I've been involved in the battle from the get-go. So I'm going to get around this corner, get into a lovely little position, or I, at least I thought it was a lovely little position. Here, I'm going to be able to put shots onto that louver. Here we go. Boom. One into him. Another 445. Not a bad roll for the Iron Alpha gun, because that was APC. That was just AP. Here comes the Emil, smack him as well, another 414, so I'm doing quite nice damage. Oh, and there's an IS-5, which I didn't intend, so now I'm going to get smacked left, right and centre. I will knock him for one and allow my teammate to finish him off. There we go. This gives me opportunity now to move out of the way. I've lost a bit of hit points, but nothing to write home about at this moment in time. Thought the Emil may come around the corner, but he doesn't. I'm going to let the K91 deal with the Emil. I'm going to deal with the Louver, take a shot from him, which I do, but I only knock him. I only get 190 into me. That's a great shot from the ISA. Was not expecting that, to be fair, so full credit to him. Really, really was a good shot. I'm worried now because I'm losing hit points, but the K91 is going to be able to deal with the Emil without me getting involved too much. He, he was fully loaded, so that shouldn't be too difficult for him. Now, I've got a choice. And what I'm going to do, knowing that the IS-8 has got absolutely awful dispersion, I'm going to rush him. I'm going to go straight across this map. I put one across his bows to force him to fire. He does. He misses me completely because he's an IS-8 and it ain't the best gun in the world. Let's be frank. So I'm allowed to push him. K91 you can see is going around the other side, so he's keeping his attention too. Come round, K91 hits him. I finish him off. We finish on 3,714 damage. We block over a thousand. We take a few kills. We get a first class, not setting the world on fire, but it's good enough. And that is what I love about the Conqueror. It's a very versatile tier nine heavy tank. And it's one of those tanks that you can be passive aggressive, as you can see in those two replays. I'm not saying it's impenetrable. Of course it is. You saw from the armor profile, be careful. It looks rock solid, turret wise, but realistically it isn't. Just remember, use the strengths of the tank, get yourself into a good position and use that gun. That is the important thing about the use of the Conqueror. Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujin, by all means comment and everything below. A big shout out to my Patrons, my YouTube members and of course my subscribers. If you've got any decent replays, guys, wing them across to me, FujitsBlitz at gmail.com. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.